So <clears throat> what we're talking about is, um, well, you could say the meeting is a response to a sense of longing. And I differentiate between longing and wanting. So longing is not for the next experience, is not just to get something else. Hi. Longing isn't, isn't actually for more. It's for the end of seeking, really, is what, how I would define longing. And wanting is, <clears throat> is wanting more. And this, this meeting, you could say, is a response to the longing, and it has nothing for the wanting more. So what won't happen here is there won't be any information, there won't be any practice, there won't be anything to learn. It's not about becoming or changing what is in any way. It's a response to the longing. And the longing isn't actually for more. It's the end, it's a longing to, for wholeness, you could say. It's, it's a longing for freedom. In the story of Jim, that was the core sense of it, was a longing for freedom or wholeness. Um, so I guess for some, often, this meeting will be quite disappointing because it's not going to feed that sense of need, that sense of wanting a better experience. There isn't going to be any guidance about how to find wholeness. The reason there isn't any guidance is because all there is is wholeness. So this is what's longed for, which has certain consequences to that wanting experience. That wanting experience is convinced that something needs to happen, that what it, what, what's looked for in its, in its experience is something it's going to know. Is it something that it's going to be able to add to what it feels it is, so that it'll feel, well, basically, happy all the time. I know there's a lot of different words out there, peaceful, happy, joyous, whatever. This doesn't, this doesn't speak to that. It doesn't speak to it in, in any way, really. If, if what we're talking about is heard, it actually undermines it, which can't be wanted. The wanting experience just wants to continue. It just wants to move on. It just wants more for itself. And all that this has to suggest, and it's nothing to give because it can't be given because it's already true there. What we're talking about, wholeness or freedom, the absolute, is already true. It's already the case. So this isn't about changing anything. It's pointing out that it's already done. There's nothing that could happen that would make this more of what's longed for than it is already. The problem is, for the individual, is that that's nothing to it. And so you'll hear that a lot, that I'll say or this will say, that this is nothing, and it is, appearing as this. So there's nothing in it for the separate experience. The individual is looking for something for itself. And this message just doesn't have anything for it. It's empty. There's nothing to hold on to. So I've often heard, I don't know if it's, oh, it definitely is a criticism, that this sounds like spiritual bypassing. <clears throat> and if there's one thing this message isn't, it's not spiritual bypassing, because it doesn't give anything to the individual to do anything about anything, nor does it suggest that there's a right or a wrong way for it to be, which is awful for the individual because it wants some sort of guidance. There isn't any guidance here. It's a very simple, it's very, very simple. It's actually too simple. 
It's that what's longed for, wholeness, is overlooked by the sense that there's something that needs to happen. It's overlooked by the experience that this isn't it. It's overlooked by the experience of seeking, seeking more. It's quite simply this. This is what's longed for, and that's all-inclusive. There's nothing excluded from that. It includes everything. Which, again, is a terrible message for the individual because it gives it nothing to do, nothing to hold on to, nothing to have, nothing to work towards. It's done. Hmm. Uh, we can talk about that if you like. It does, it does sound really terrible, Jim. Oh, it is. Well, to the individual. Yeah, to the separate experiencer, it is. It's probably the worst thing you could hear. If it could, it can't, so it doesn't matter. It'll make an object out of what we're talking about. It'll make an object out of non-duality or at the absolute. Uh, Jim, I was thinking about if trauma, individual trauma, prevents... No. <laughs> And more to see that no. this is what it is. No. no. It doesn't uh -uh. make it more difficult. There isn't, so f I, in the experience of the individual, the idea for it, I think, is that the experience of being an I am, that you'd call it an intelligence, that it's going to move from its limited, separate experience to wholeness. And if that were true, it's not. If that were true, then its experience would be limiting. But there isn't an intelligence that moves from a limited separate experience to wholeness. That limited separate experience is an illusion. So we probably call it trauma is illusory. Either. Well, trauma is an illusory. Trauma is illusory. No, that someone has trauma is illusory. But trauma is trauma. It's wholeness <coughs> of being trauma. Does the trauma keeps the no. sense of the individual no. more trapped? No. no. Mm -mm. It's not, the individual isn't, it owns things. It, not in the sense of an activity, but in the sense that everything that arises is mine or isn't mine. So it's just a sense, it's not an activity, it's just a function of being separate that everything that arises has to do with me, is my experience, my thoughts, my feelings, my perception. And in that, it can give trauma and other things energy. But there isn't anything limited, it, not in actuality, only in the illusion, because this is wholeness, so it just appears as trauma. It's wholeness or the absolute, appearing as trauma. <laughs> being is not an activity. Being is not an activity. No. Being. Being, well, no, that's not true. Being is an act. well, an illusory activity. But it doesn't have any power. So it doesn't have any power not to have the sense everything is about me. And when I say owning, it's, I think I, am, I, I give something, an idea, that I can, if the, the, so the goal is not to own everything, and that's, that's not what I mean. That's why I say it's not an activity. Hey, Jim. Hey. Uh, I have a question on the notion of existence. Yeah. So when I look at a tree, for example. That's a dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which part of that? Uh, I. I look at the tree. That's the dream. Okay. So, in, in, in me looking at a tree, the tree exists? We can only go in circles now. In the dream, there's only, it's a very small circle of chasing your own tail. So, in the dream of me, there's just chasing your own tail. There is no escape from the dream of me. Okay, so to simplify the question, do things exist? Yes and no. So the tree exists. But not separate. Right. So if, 
if looking at a tree is happening yeah and then i walk out of the room and i'm no longer looking at the tree it still exists well yeah as an idea or as a memory so it 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 exists in the act of observing it at the same time it's like created by looking at it. well it well but there are thoughts about things that don't exist and so those are thoughts about things that don't exist or thoughts of things that aren't perceived so this doesn't have to do with life and observation of things. No, it doesn't. It's, it's not like about that. Life in the universe. Well, it depends on what you mean by life. There's two sort of ways to talk about life. Life forms or aliveness. I don't know what you mean. If you talk about life forms, yeah, I guess there could possibly be no life forms. Although they found little bitty microscopic life on Mars. So life out there. So there always seems to be some sort of life form. But this is... This isn't about the appearance. Well, in a sense it is, but it's, it's that the appearance is no thing or the absolute appearing. And that's, that's, that's differentiating the experience that I'm the observer. Right. But Rather than, to my mind, it seems like for no thing to even appear, there needs to be some sort of life form or thing. To no, be no, no, absolutely not. No. No, that's called something. What is that called? There's a, there's a, no, no. Solipsism, is that it? Solipsism? You're the only person that exists. Right, exactly. And so only, only, all that exists is only what I perceive. And this isn't about the perceiver or no perceiver or what exists when there is or isn't a perceiver. It's that there isn't a perceiver. The perceiver is an illusion. So there's no objective reality. There, the objective and subjective are not separate. It's the same thing. Um, if there's nothing for the individual, yeah. yet you as an individual have arrived here to, to <laughs> deliver this. We've all arrived here. So even though this is not for the individual, we're all somehow have come together and this message is being shared. And I'm just curious to know, even though it's not for the individual, how it affects the individual. Um, for instance, um, the war in Gaza, I am very affected by it. But from this view of no one's here, it seems like I could just um, look at that experience dispassionately, like nothing's no one's suffering. Yeah. No one's, nothing's <clears throat> happening. Yeah. Anymore. I think that's a, I think that's common the way, so that would be an interpretation of what we're talking about. That would be an individual idea, sort of of detachment, of not being affected by everything. And it's just, that's just not what this is about. It's not about being unaffected. It's just that there's no one being affected. There can still being, be being affected. There's just no one having the emotion or feeling. There's no so if I'm suffering over something, and I had, and the realization occurs that there's no one here, there's just suffering happening. Yeah. Yeah. To no one. Yeah. And what I'm perceiving in the news or whatever is uh, is just story. Well, no. The only story is that there's a perceiver. That's the only story. Otherwise, there's just news, terrible news, good news. So this has, I mean, th this is where I get stuck because it's like this. Well, I'll tell you where you get stuck. You didn't come here. Yeah. No one else did. Right. No one came no here. One came. This moment, let's call it a moment, just for conversation, isn't connected to another moment. So there actually already isn't a story. There's just what appears, which is nothing appearing. So is Jim Newman affected by the news? Like, well, it's I, I'm entertainment. It's interesting. There's no, there's no there the, would be no call for you to fight injustice, for instance, to go protest war, to do something. Who knows? 
know. Who knows? It, it does, this doesn't have it worked out. This doesn't know. There isn't actually a Jim Newman. I understand the body's, and it responds to that, but there isn't actually a Jim Newman. <clears throat> But there might be. But this understanding affects Jim Newman's life. No, no, there isn't. A, there act, if this is it, meaning it's all there is, it's not a, a consequence of another moment, then how could, what, where is the life for it to have an effect on? Where is the other moment for it to have an effect? Where is the other, where is the need for this to be understood to be implemented, applied, to make sense of it. There just isn't. So that whole experience that there's an individual here that has a life that needs to be worked out is part of that dream that there's somebody sitting, that somebody's in the body or is the body, I don't know how you think of it, that has meaning and purpose and that the appearance has an intention. So for the individual, the appearance is incomplete. It's lacking in some way. That sometimes it's internalized, sometimes it's externalized, but the, there's a lack in some way. And that's the movement of the individual, is to fulfill or feed that lack, that need. And it can be projected in all sorts of ways. You know, um, self-immolation is a need being affected, wanting to, to feel bad about what's happening in the world and feeling like something should be changed is, is the individual feeling like the appearance is in some way lacking and it needs to be rectified and it's my job. But doesn't this understanding... It's not an understanding. I'm, I tried to say view, that. To no. It's no view. It's no understanding. There, this doesn't... In a very real way, this doesn't understand what we're talking about. It's not understandable. It's not separate. Yet, yet it's brought all of us together. Well, no one came here. This moment isn't connected to another moment. There's no evidence that, there's, that time is real. Only for the individual is there evidence for time is real. There's a, it's a solidity, a point in the appearance that feels like, a solidity that feels like it's moving through time. That is a dream. That, these, that there's a continuity to the, the appearance. This is the whole of it. There isn't anything else. And there's actually no evidence of anything else. But for the individual, the sense is, I moved from birth to here, and therefore I'll move forward. And that's the sense, that's, how I, that's the need of making sense of my life. I have a life. I need to make it work. Doesn't happen. It never happened. So the end of the story of that con continuity, when, if that were to end, it doesn't actually end, because there never is anything but what is. So it's not the end of something that actually happened. It's the end of a dream that something was really happening. <laughs> Yay! I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm... Uh, um, okay, sorry. <laughs> It just seems that this message has had an effect on Jim Newman's day-to-day -day activity. Yeah. And that's what it appears. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's an appearance, yeah. But to, 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 cause, to, to say that it's a causal thing is a misunderstanding. <clears throat> well, yes and no, because there appears to be cause and effect. But it doesn't affect that everything is this, which is the absolute or nothing appearing as this. And it can appear as cause and effect. It can appear as time, the past. It can appear as anything. Every, as I started off, everything's included. We're not, the individual can't help but want to change the appearance. It feels like that's what, where it's, Salvation is hidden. But really what's longed for is the end of that separate experience. That's what's longed for. 
and that isn't something to be found or something to be um, uh, made happen. Can't can't be made to happen. Every effort is a confirmation that it seems to be happening. This is what's longed for. It's just simple. There's no answers, no understanding. But there is a sense that this is what's longed for. No, not anymore. Not here, anyway. No. Then what does it mean when you say this is what's longed for? As a reaction to separation, in you know the, the experience of separation, the one thing, there's something... So, as far as I'm concerned, everybody knows what we're talking about. It's obvious. There's something that already knows what we're talking about. Knows is the wrong word, please excuse me. Um, <clears throat> And out of that, that separation comes out of that sort of sense that there's something else. It's not, it's not the way it seems. There's a longing for the end of that experience of separation, for the end of separation. Isn't that kind of, isn't that wanting something? Well, I mean, you, I call it longing. Yeah, I mean it's arbitrary, but it just makes sense. It's just words, but I just differentiate wanting being from the separate experience and longing, not not really. I'm kind of wondering, and this is not meant to be funny. Why people come to sit in a room with? And you know what else I wonder? I totally agree. I also wonder why not everyone is here. <laughs> why, why not all of New York just showed up at the door? I've been thinking. I'm, I'm sort of, it's funny, this is open to both of those. Every time I have a meeting, it's, so, it's kind of exciting. It's like, I wonder if a million people are going to show up, or if no one. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering why we're not in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Everybody doing nothing. Yeah. Well, nobody can do nothing, I mean, but absolutely, I, I'm 100% with you. Somebody would probably shoot you. Are there any oh, dear. The <laughs> we are in America. <laughs> are there any producers in the room I'd, I'd like to get together with you to get Jim into Madison? Yeah, yeah. And maybe even run for office. It'll never happen. <laughs> It'll never happen because of what I said at the beginning. There is nothing on offer. There aren't that many people that are truly open for nothing. It, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. It seems almost a little disingenuous to me because you're. What all, is? Because what you're talking about is freedom. What? What's disingenuous? That you're saying that not there's, there's there is something here for this <clears throat> illusory individual, which is. Maybe you could say it's a desire to not exist. Desire but but to that recognize that you, you don't exist. Or but it, but it doesn't. The individual doesn't want that. It can't want I, that. Yes, I under I understand that. Oh, okay. That the individual, just by our nature, wants to exist. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm here. Yeah. Because I'm very interested in this message, but then I keep hitting this. I don't know, intellectual wall or just, Oh no, it's not intellectual. No, I know. I don't it's know. a no, but it is an absolute wall. Mm -hmm. I said a brick wall and someone said no. There's something to hold on to in a brick wall. This is a cl an absolutely clear glass wall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's nothing to hold on to. Absolutely it is that. And it's on that. It's on at, on all levels it is that. And that's just a reflection of the way this is. The experience that there's something owned, there's someone to have something, is a dream. There isn't separation for someone to have something else. That's a dream. So it's just a reflection of the way it is already. Just for the individual, I think I said this in the beginning, that wants something else or something more, it's dissatisfying. It can be frustrating. Right. It can make you angry. Like waking up from a can nightmare. seem disingenuous. I can recognize that I just had a dream. And then I never think about it for the rest of the day or the rest of my life because I recognize it was just a dream. Yeah. So it didn't mean anything. But it's, it's a more profound, sorry for that, because it sounds like a big deal, but it's more profound than that or more all-encompassing than that. 
than an individual not having a thought. It's that the whole of this is not separate. And it's, there's an illusion of an experiencer in this wholeness mm -hmm. that feels like it is. And that comes with all these apparent consequences of what the story of me is. Is it a dream the same as an illusion? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as I'm talking about it, yeah, I, I say it. I use those interchangeably, yeah. Uh, and every, everything's really... Is everything an illusion? No, just the dream. Because I, I heard some Indian guru say everything is an illusion. Yeah. Well, you'd have to ask him what he meant. I wouldn't say that. He died a long time ago. Oh, man. Those are the best gurus, the ones that keep, <laughs> they can't confront you. <laughs> uh, so, I'm trying to satisfy my mind's like, ability. Oh, that's, that's going to be difficult. <laughs> For whatever reason, it's easy enough for me to accept that evolution created the idea, this notion of a separate self in a human body. That's a story. It's a survival yeah. benefit. No, it's not. To think you're separate, you affect yourself. That's no, right. no. The no. body does it much more effectively if there's no experience of separation. <laughs> Do other animals have a separate self? No. So it's unique to you. It is, yeah. Well, it seems to be. Like a squirrel, don't think a squirrel is running around thinking no. it's separate. No, I mean, if you look at a cat, it's obvious it's not separate. If they were separate, they'd be meditating. <laughs> okay, so. Trying to find, they'd probably build a church, the Church of Holy Cats or something. <laughs> they've done that already. <laughs> I've seen that on the picture. <laughs> the cat is definitely more separated than the squirrel. Oh, <laughs> now we're into philosophy. <laughs> so, um, protection or entertainment. I've got four. They seem to entertain each other by fighting sometimes. It's easy for my mind to accept that everything's just happening and there's no control. So just but I. I don't know why, but with you, it's just the, um, th this is an unacceptable message. It's unacceptable. It can't be accepted. Any acceptance of it is a misunderstanding of it. It's not acceptable. Because yeah. the message purely is, there isn't anyone. Mm -hmm. Who would accept that? How could it be accepted? Are there multiple different what is? is? Apparently. I mean, you could say that that has a different perspective. Right. Yeah. Like an astronaut on the moon. Right. What is yeah. This That's, is. Well, no, it's not a different what is. It's a different apparent perspective. But that apparent perspective, there is only what is, which is nothing. So all perspectives are nothing appearing as all perspectives. It's all just what's appearing. It's all just what's appearing. Yeah. Which is nothing. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the inconceivable appearing as this. Nothing in the sense that it could be anything? No, and no potential. There's no potential. There's not hidden potential somewhere. This is the fulfillment. This. The individual misses that because it knows it's sitting in a room having a conversation. So that then this as purity as freedom is lost, is missed, it's missed, it's overlooked, because it feels like this needs to be something else. So why do you use the word nothing? Nothing, because you can't say anything about it. You could say no thing, but if you put some, if you put it, somebody wrote something recently, or do you mean the face of God, you know, some of these Indian terms, and maybe the guys that thought of that, or the girls that thought of those terms, is what they're talking about the same thing. But as soon as you say something like that, it becomes an object. It becomes something separate. And what we're talking about is not something separate. I mean, I, I'd tell you if I could, I can't. But you can make an inference. Excuse me? Make an you can say I do. Absolute, nothing, aliveness. 
saying not tunis say it's all single source like an agreement well but you've got a source there um, i'm just saying oh i don't know what the source is i know when i wake up I oh no but I, there's no source in a dream everything seems in a dream everything seems individual just like this i could be dreaming this right now when i wake up i realize oh it's all from my single source yeah what our wait what we see now here yeah. could be just we can infer this is all single. But that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It doesn't contradict what you're talking about. Yeah, it does, because there's so it some be a bridge to others. That's all I'm saying. All right. <laughs> there's no bridge because there's no separation. <laughs> What's that? Back to like the cat protection. Cat protection, yeah. Yeah. So it exists, there's no individuation. It just is with cats, right? Well, individuation is a psychological term. There's no separation. There's no individual. Right. So, we might fight entertainment. Yeah. That I get. Protection from what? Well, well, the cats, you know, I mean, if they had to, well, eat. So it's not protection. Protection mm -hmm. from starvation. Survival. Survival. That, this, this, the system survives intrinsically. It's just wired to do that. The individual sort of undermines that immediacy of just survival. There's an individual. There's no need for an individual for this to survive. I noticed you stopped using the word energy. Energy. Oh, I, sometimes, yeah. I don't have a real connection to it. When you, when you were talking about these bodies coming here, and it's not, um, you were saying that it's not something intellectual or, or mental, but there is something that recognizes or something that feels the resonance, so whatever the term is, um, that something, um, can the individual ever sense or experience? No. No. But in terms of lo inside the longing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I wanted to talk about. I think that's in, in different ways seekers, <laughs> you know, somehow get to that word, I guess. Um, in in sort of deeper states of longing, you can say that. Right. You're, Despair? You're, 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 so it's not, so if, if I can describe it, in, in the deepest state of longing, there's actually no despair. There is no desire to end it. There is no desire not to end it. Um, it's, and, and it's sort of the, sort of the, you know, if, if, if one can describe an ideal state, um, it's sort of the sense of that ideal state, um, but no. So you just, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Longing is, is a, 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 a response to discontent, the fundamental discontent of being separate. So, so what, how, um, I know you said you don't know what I'm talking about, but, <laughs> but if, if um, like, can you, can you comment on that experience then, like a, an individual's experience when, um, because you've been to states, you know, in... in I yeah, what we're talking about isn't a state, though. Right, yeah. It's not, there's not a state of non-duality. Right. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I think what I was trying to get was when an individual is in that state, which is not non-duality. Of longing. Of longing. Yeah. Um, is that an experience that individual is trying to put some label on but not getting it? No, I don't know that the individual, like like with the contraction or anything else, knows anything about longing. It has nothing to do with the individual. But aren't we, aren't we here longing? So, some might be here because there's a, a nothing else worked. <laughs> Well, okay. What's that? Well, 
Will we be getting a grade? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. Pass fail or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have to pay to get it. And I won't tell you what it is until you've paid. So. Consciousness or awareness, some type of imposition? Yeah. Yeah. It's just another thing. So the belonging is not from the individual? No. Oh. It's a response to the individual, to separation. So I feel like the individual would be the one belonging. Uh uh. No, it wants. It wants something else. Longing is for the end of wanting something else. But if it's, let's say, if, you, if it's not the individual, there's this apparent log longing. But if this is... Oh no, if there's no individual, there's no longing. But it happens outside the individual. Yeah, as a response of separation. Oh. As a response to what? Separation. But there's no individual. No, well, no, but there is the illusory experience of being one. So there's an illusion of a, a mass of longing in the room. Maybe. Maybe. I, from this perspective, there are no individuals here. There are claims of being an individual. There are claims of having a life and those things, and, and none of it actually happens. That's obvious that it doesn't happen. It's obvious that it's nothing claiming to be an individual having a life. What is your day-to-day -day life like? Um, well, I wake up and drink about a fifth of vodka. Um, <clears throat> most days I don't even get out of bed. What's the point, you know? <laughs> How is it that, that I noticed this beautiful lady over here? Oh, yeah. With you? I know. Well, I mean, if you're doing all this drinking and staying in bed, what is she doing? I know. She does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> she says, Won't you wash the dishes? I said, There's no one to wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. So, are you available for relationship coaching? <laughs> There aren't any relationships. Maybe, maybe, maybe Laura is. <laughs> maybe Laura. Laura's probably ready for that, yeah. <clears throat> what is it about separation that's so uncomfortable? It's, I, you know, it's, first off, there's a sense of fear. The, the survival, which is, which is broad. It's loss, change, out of control. All those things are the fear of death. All those things are in the fear of death. And the discontent of the sense of that something's missing, something's not right. And in some way, you could say, the individual feels as though it's been cast out of paradise. And there's that sense of loss. So does the sense of being separate and the sense of control, are those kind of one and the same? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like I control. Oh, absolutely. Free will. Oh, absolutely. Free will, yeah. And that's, that's stressful to feel like you're in control. Well, the feeling like, so the story, the individual has a story about what its life is and about what its goal is or ideas, the meaning and purpose of its life. And that is stressful, having to fulfill the meaning and purpose of my life, the sense that it has it, I, I'm responsible. And you're, you're an endless failure. Because you're supposed to be, be happy, you're supposed to have whatever else there's supposed to be, and there's no hope of ever getting that. It never works. It'll never work. It lives in a insatisfaction, which is a temporary relief from the sense of need that the individual has, and that's like a Netflix film or a good meal or a fifth of vodka. There's a sense of satisfaction, and then immediately after that, there's the need for something else. It never ends. So all those. Th Addiction, drugs, alcohol, yeah. all these things. Well, no, no, sorry. I don't want to make it negative because the individual does it. It's incessant. So in this room, if there's an individual, it is feeding on the appearance. It's feeding on what's happening. It's trying to get something for itself out of it endlessly. 
drugs are just an easy target. But I mean, walking down the street, waking up in the morning, I mean, everything is something for the individual. Like a new experience. Anything. Or it's happy with being bored and unhappy. It just wants more. It's not necessarily, it, it has ideas about wanting to be happy, but really it just wants more. Even unhappiness is preferable to nothing. It's not satisfied with just what's happening. It can't be satisfied. It, well, I'm, again, I differentiate between satisfaction and fulfillment, and satisfaction temporary. And so it can momentarily be satisfied. It feels like that's what it is. I'm aware, I'm conscious. Would you say that the individual is uh, object leaning? Like, as in this message, you're, you're saying something about the individual. Yeah. But it doesn't, it wants to ignore that every time. Yeah. And kind of just talk about other objects. Well, it does that by making an object of what's being said. Right. Yeah. As a function, not as a choice. It can't help but make an object out of nothing. If I say nothing, that becomes a something to it, or the absolute. Or the message. It can't, it can't get that it's all-inclusive. It's everything. Huh. So it's the logging up by itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there any individual with power to contract Is there any individual? With power to contract No. Yeah. No. Yeah, the individual. The contraction is what first arises and out of that comes the individual. So right now it's in this contraction. What again is contraction? What's that? What again is contraction? Well, I, I say that the individual starts with a contraction in the body, with a tension in the body, the whole body actually. I do this, I know, but it's the whole body. Is that due to wanting? Or? No, wanting comes out of that. Before there's the contraction, there's just simply everything. Nothing being everything. And, and the longing is? A response to the contraction, the being kicked out of paradise. So is the contraction ever evident? No, and only in the falling away. Only in the only when it falls. Only when it dissipates. Then, that. well, it's only ever recognized when it dissipates. Other than, uh, otherwise, in the in the dream, in the separate dream, all that really can be re- seen are the effects, such as discontent, wanting. Those effects can be seen. The effects of wanting? The effects of the separation. Make you that. said earlier there's, there's a longing to be free yeah. of separation. Yeah, there is. But not in the, the individual doesn't long to be free. The individual longs for more. Mm-hmm. Or wants more. So then, how do I get out of it? Oh, you don't. You okay. might die, though. Did you do the eulogy at my death? Yeah. I, I think it'd be very really funny. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it'd be Comedy Central. Like, <laughs> people would be hysterical. Yeah. Over nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the individual can't really hear it. No. No, it objectifies it. It makes a something out of it, whereas what I'm saying is it's nothing. Yeah. Did you? Did oh, we answer it? As you're talking right now, there's like a sense of uh, like vibrating, flowing kind of energy and tenseness as well. And so when I hear you talking about the falling away of that contraction, there's a sense of like, oh, that energy needs to change. The granularity needs to change. It needs to dissolve or fall yeah. away. <laughs> so there's this sort of kind of like subtle demand. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that is that 
everything that appears is already that what's longed for. So uh, there isn't a possibility for anything to change for this to become that. Any change is that which is longed for appearing as this. You say it's already that. Yeah. Longed for? Yeah. Because it's no, what it is. it's not because of anything. So why, why would you say that? Then? Why would you say what it oh, is? Oh, it is. Well, because it is. <laughs> you just know that. Yeah, I don't know it, but yeah, it's absolutely. Obvious to you. Yeah, absolutely. Because it feels pleasurable, not that it's pleasurable. No, it's not. A, it has nothing to do with experience. It's not an experience. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I feel like intuition makes me. You know, this brought me here, and when I hear teaching that sort of more strongly than this. Yeah. Like I smell a yeah. That's yeah. Intuition. Yeah. Is that the intuition? Well, intuition is just something else that appears. There's just a certain sense. It's not always really trustworthy, actually, especially if there's an individual. Right. Without the individual, it's a little bit clearer, but it's still not particularly trustworthy. I guess the word intuition is maybe some special or something, but it hmm. somehow feels really elemental. Yeah. What makes this body that has a name Jim Newman do this? Yeah, nothing. With your life? Nothing, nothing is made. Nothing. Well, this doesn't have a life. You don't either. No one has a life. Well, this appearance of a body showing up and doing this around the world. Yeah. There's something that, there's a cause. Yeah, she makes me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just stay in bed and get drunk. So she says, come on. She goes, you like it. I'm like, I don't. I'm like, I don't. She says, yeah, you do. What's that? She's the only somebody. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't any body. There are only bodies. There isn't any somebody. So it's kind of pointless to talk about individuals. Like, like talking about your life is pointless. Oh, completely. The whole meeting is pointless. That's, that's, that, if there was a way to, 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 to express the message, this is pointless. It's pointless. It doesn't need to have a point. It's only for the individual where there's this sense that something is missing, that there needs to be a point, and the point for the individual is to find that thing, which is either more knowing or a particular experience. And it's heard all sorts of things. There's gurus out there who talk about wonderful and magical things and all this promises and all that, and maybe it's latched onto some of those. Maybe it's a car. Maybe it's just laying in bed getting drunk all day. There's some idea that there needs to be, a, that there is a goal, an intention to the appearance, a t an in intention to the appearance, there isn't, there, there, that's just a dream. It's done, it's not going anywhere and doesn't need to. So all, us, all of us as individuals showed up so that basically this message could, could kill this idea that we're people or somebody. Well, I think, what seems to me, first off, there aren't a lot of individuals. If there is, there's only one and that's it. Um, <clears throat> and, and it's only a claim, it's not really individual, but I understand the claim. I think it's a mixture. I think most people come with a mixture of wanting and longing, or openness and wanting. And that I think so it can <clears throat> simultaneously be this inward yes, and at the same time, a frustration or something else like that. Simultaneously. Because there's two things going on. It's deeper than intellectual. Because the, the sense of, of need that the individual is is quite deep in the body that something needs to happen. And that, in, the, in a meeting like this, can be really frustrated. As you know, you keep trying to ask about the individual life, and it doesn't get anything. Because it wants to know. 
It wants to know, it wants to add something to itself, it wants to move on to what maybe, what Jim has. Jim doesn't have it. There isn't a Jim to have anything. So it's just frustrated. I'm just curious that Jim is, uh, this, this message is important enough that Jim's life. Oh, it's not. <clears throat> it's not important. Sharing this message. No, it just happens. There's no reason for it. There's nothing here that's, that's trying to. That feels disingenuous. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing here that trying to tell that anything. Or cares if it hears it. It makes no difference. That's wholeness. Mm -hmm. It's not separate from this. Mm -hmm. There isn't anything that needs to happen there. Nothing. It's done. That is equally wholeness as this is. Mm -hmm. It's complete. It's already done. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing that needs to happen. So there isn't, there isn't an effort from here to do anything to that. Well, None. I get that, but there's a desire. Some, something is motivating this. Well, but I'm afraid in the dream. Yeah, no, no, it's not in the dream. There is no dream. I mean, I understand if there is one, that's what's happening, but it's an illusion. Um, yeah, it, somebody asked. And this thought, okay. It is a, for the individual trying to get something. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. So, Jim, in in the whole, when you said if there's in the if the appearance of the individual in the whole, when there is that contraction in the whole, is everything longing then? Well, no, I wouldn't. I mean, you could say it that way, because the individual is actually everything. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, I would say that actually everything seems to be out of place in some yeah. way. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What's, what's in place? Well, there isn't an in place. That's, that's the dream of the individual, that there's an out of place, and its job is to put it in place. Oh, that's There isn't. Cool. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll never happen? No, it'll never happen. Because there's nothing out of place. Yeah. The biggest problem for the individual is that there isn't one. <laughs> Can you imagine? It hates that. It's like, what do you mean there isn't a problem? <laughs> yeah, there is. Oh, I don't. I was eating food off the neighbor's plate yesterday. Laura was like, stop that. I thought there's no separation. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, there's something just naturally appropriate about how this acts or what this does. You mean based on condition? I guess, probably, yeah. Yeah. But Jim Newman doesn't say, doesn't think of himself as separate anymore. It's not a thought. There isn't a Jim Newman to think he's not separate. Right, where, whereas I, for instance, that's still, it's still very strong, this sense of separation. Yeah. But for Jim Newman, that doesn't exist. Not for Jim Newman. Yes, that's right, I get it. Okay, yeah. So a lack of separation doesn't mean that everything feels great all the time? No. But things are just what they are. Like yeah. The feeling of sadness or whatever. Yeah. It's not overlaid with more bullshit on top of like, what? Yeah, no, totally. Well, sometimes you make a reference to like contentness, being content or like a homeless or. I don't. Okay. I don't think I do talk about contentment. Yeah. 
question. I guess what would wholeness feel like? It wouldn't. It uh, there isn't. A, it's not a feeling. I was walking yesterday. I went to the train station and I need to get to Seacoffice Junction. And I saw that I had like a minute left when I got there. And I didn't even think. And I just saw a bunch of people running. So I was like, I don't have time. It was it just ran with the people got on the train. And then I was like, is this the right train? Yeah, of and course. Think, and it was, I was sitting down and thinking about that. If I had to like decide and walk through all those steps and plan, I would never have, it was just a miracle that yeah. all, the whole thing just happened that way. Mm. And I ended up being on the yeah. right train. But yeah. if I had to like think about it, I would still be there deciding what to do. Yeah. Yeah. But this message isn't about things going your way or not going I, your I'm way. I'm not talking about that, but even just the processes that had happened. But it's not about there being no processes. Yes, I know, but they were. Ha it seemed like that if I had to think through it, that almost like when you miss an accident, when when, when you almost hit somebody in a car, if you had to think yeah. about how you swear. But it's not about reaction or response. Or it's it's that everything that appears is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I was saying that could be getting on the wrong train. Yeah, that's, that's misleading. What I'm saying is that I feel like I'm in control of it, and then I'm looking back at the whole thing. And what, and what I'm saying is that it's not about something changing. Obviously, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Once the me falls away, it can kind of help in a way functionally. In yeah. In a way, does it kind of do that? Is There's it just, it takes an enormous amount of energy. Feeling like you're responsible and that you have to work it out and that there's a real life that needs to be attended to. That's an enor that takes an enormous amount of energy. So is it the, the energy that's freed up? Just yeah. Puts you more in that flow? Yeah. Well, it, the thing is, is the, there isn't a me to fall away. It's just another story. Jim, on, on that point, I mean, similar to what, what uh, Joey was saying, when this message is heard or similar in the story, um, it is not unusual, at least, to experience that the energy that is being used ordinarily um, gets saved and things start to happen, even in the story. Things are happening like pretty effortlessly. Um, that is that something that sort of happens when effortlessness? Yeah, yeah. Like you know, things are, like you know, getting on the right train seems to happen. You know, showing up for this seems to happen. Oh no, no, I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say that. Your life is then your life is then better, but there isn't anyone making a mess of it. Not in that way. Simple. There's missing a train or getting a train. Why does the longing apparently happen if it's outside the individual? The response just apparently happens. Yeah. Outside the individual? Yeah. But where does it happen? wherever it happens, longing. Longing still something happening, longing is happening. Yeah, something yeah, happening. yeah. How did you think about birth and death? Oh, that's what apparently happens, birth and death. But no one is born and no one dies. There isn't an individual that's born. But bodies are born and they die, apparently. But in death, then, the appearance of whatever through the senses stop, it will no longer happen. Obviously. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So then, what is happening after that? Yeah, whatever is happening, whatever is, what is, is what appears to be, whatever is. The individual lives in a world where it's, it's sense-dependent. Its existence is sense-dependent. It gives a lot of energy to it. It feels like it's in the body, and the experience of the happening of the body is everything. And so the end of that is threatening. Mm 
because it feels like that would be the end of everything or the end of its experience, the end of it, which is the worst thing in the world. But there is, there already isn't anyone having senses. There are just senses. There's nothing dependent upon senses, and senses aren't any evidence of anything separate. Or it's senses only senses are required for things to appear to be happening. Well, they're required for this to appear. The senses uh, report this happening, but there's nothing dependent upon this happening. For the individual, it is. This is its life. Yeah. But that's a dream. This isn't anyone's life. This is just an appearance. But without senses, the, the what is, what is what's, what's apparently happening? Is. Wouldn't have senses. <laughs> is there less fear? Yeah. I'm not feeling this at the moment, but I tend to get really frustrated at um, social norms and just the contortion that has to happen in this reality. Um, sometimes it physically feels like it's hard for me to breathe and relax. Um, just being in this type of physical form in particular. And I think I'm just touching upon my the violence of like language itself, because I find that like words, we're putting things into these like categories and like stripping away the isness of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, it physically makes me really sad. Yeah. Um, well, the individual thinks that freedom is hidden in the appearance. And so it wants the appearance to be a certain way so that it can feel free. And it never does, it never will. It could have anything it wanted. It'll never feel free. Free is another experience that it feels like it could have. What's longed for is the freedom that this is already. And freedom can appear as feeling contracted or not liking norms or anything else. That's freedom. It's not for you. Nothing we're talking about is for you. <clears throat> Their needs are taken care of? Oh, yeah, or not. This is not practical at all. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no. It's not useful. No. It's a lot of money to pay to hear that. Oh, yeah, I know. It's the reason I only say it near the middle or the end. <laughs> <laughs> Never in the beginning. Like if, if needs are not met, then it's just needs not being met. Yeah. It's not about what happens. It's that anything that seems to be happening is not separate. There's no one for it to be separate. But of course, if needs are not met, the individual will probably take, try to take control on his hands and try to make it. Well, if there's an individual, it's not about how it reacts to, you know, what's happening. It's that everything that's happening is separate from me. Separate from what? Me. And that sense of separation engenders all the stuff we're talking about. Intention, need, meaning, purpose. I was once at Discontent. a retreat with uh, someone named Paul Rowe. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. And um, somebody was um, concerned about their relationship <clears throat> not meeting their needs. And he said, look up in the sky, there's billions of universes. Does it really matter what's going on? Hmm. And that sort of loosened the longing. 
that the memory. Yeah. And, and it's reactivating here. Well, the messages are very different. Tell me more. Well, this isn't about because so when the astronauts went to the moon or left the, or Earth's orbit for the first time, uh, they say there was a change in consciousness about how we could feel so separate, how it's just one blue ball in the middle of endless nothingness, and that obviously has a profound effect on the psyche. And this isn't about having an effect on the psyche. It isn't about loosening anyone up or having a, another perspective. It's that there's no one. It makes no difference what the individual feels like it does. It'll be limited to a separate experience, which will still be dissatisfactory. The message is there's no one. All there is is wholeness, and this is that. There's nothing that's not already that. Well, what goes on when, for me, yeah, when I hear some of the questions seem to be what I would judge to be like in the mind, trying to figure it out and asking you, what about this, Jim? What about that? And I, part of me, well, well, sometimes I think, I'll just shut up and listen to it. Or, or those kind of thoughts are good. And then sometimes there's humor. And then, some, and then it gets serious when the, a question gets answered that can't be answered with an answer. Here, it, every question is basically openness. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but there's an openness in the question. Unless they're, they're calling me disingenuous. <laughs> Did you raise your hand before? Is it time? No. That was a joke. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if I guess it makes me think about belief and if I, I feel like you're gonna say no. But oh. <laughs> Let's see. Believing there is no individual while there's a sense of an individual is the same thing. Is yeah, is the sense of an individual. Yeah, it's the same energy. Well, I, no, I find that the message, can, if there's a certain openness, there can be an undermining of that separate experience, a loss of uh, contraction, a loss of beliefs, a loss of sort of a softening up of things, if there's an openness. And I'm not giving that any value whatsoever. I'm just saying that happens. It makes no difference. But that can happen. So, Jim, like going back to the example you gave about the astronauts when they yeah. went yeah. and they could have like an impact on the site. Yeah. So in a sense I was thinking like all these techniques and meditation. Yeah. And although they see them still or that the gurus offer like uh, your final books, is that something like related to that? Like a, no. just to have an impact. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's trying to help you. And to help the individual. The yeah, group. that's right. Well, only. It's, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. And for me, the biggest problem with it is it just, it was, um, it, I mean, in some ways it's not a problem, but it, it just confirmed I'm a failure because it had everything to do with me doing the right thing, practicing enough, being aware enough, anything like that. I was responsible for making it happen. Freedom isn't someone's responsibility because it's, it's, well, first off, it's unrecognizable. It's not a freedom that comes about. It's a freedom that is already. So there isn't anyone to do it. <clears throat> that word failure. That word failure seems to resonate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, though. Yeah. It's 
the message is not being heard, then maybe we can try Shakti Pad Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe it's not being heard there, but who knows? No, I'm mean, yeah, talking about that. Oh, house. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Just a slap. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> slap. <laughs> Left or right cheek? <laughs> it's up to me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe we do both. <laughs> because the other option I had was, you know, the, the, the Hollywood movie where uh, a woman collides with another one and, and then this way? So that's my second option. I'm just going to... Ah, uh, right. <laughs> There's nothing here to switch with. Mm, nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> it's already that. Anything, not, anything but that. No, it's already that. Even that's that, it. So is separation like the fundamental piece of it? That yeah, discontent. I'm, I'm here, you're over there. Yeah. So without that feeling, then it's there's no more distance. There's no more. Like, no. This is over there. I'm yeah. Over there. No. This is no longer the center of. No. Of reality. No. There is no center. This is just another thing that's appearing. It's just it's just, like yeah, it's just a body. Like, just like, a body. Like this. Yeah. It's, it's just. Appearance. Yeah. That's right. And that's not something that's brought about. It's not a real change. It's not something that actually happens because it's already that way. There's just an illusion that there's something in the body, an individual. Yeah, like it feels like I'm like. I'm yeah, I know. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> How come that, that the illusion has the potential to make us overlook the whole thing? Yeah. Is it possible to have a glimpse of what you described? Oh, totally. Oh, totally. Turn. I don't know what that turning back is, but return back to the sense of no, no one returns back. No, there's nothing to return back. In relation to glimpses, so I, I heard you before say that you didn't feel that you had glimpses. Yeah. So I think I've also heard you kind of suggest that for what people what a person interprets as a glimpse are you it seems to you that you come across people they interpret a glimpse and it's like no that wasn't really well you can't interpret a glimpse they just know it huh they just no. There's no way. There's no one there to know what happened. People tell me things like, oh, it lasted 30 seconds. They don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's the contrast, really, from there being someone to there being no one, that, that how it's, it's like, oh. Because when there isn't anyone, there isn't, this doesn't know anything about any of this, what we're talking about. There isn't that contrast of someone knowing what this is, or any sort of, yeah, contrast to... Was there, a, uh, like, Eckhart Tolle tells a story of whatever, spending years yeah. on the park bench. Yeah. Was that a similar... Well, I thought his story was he was laying in bed, who is this I that can't stand it anymore, yeah. or something like that, yeah. But then after that, yeah. he didn't... He, he went on a park bench. A, a long while because yeah. his energy system needed to process no. yeah well, was it similar over there no he also said in the power of now then he had an identity again as a spiritual teacher huh after sitting god knows how long on the bench hmm. because people apparently asked him questions yeah I have no idea. What what if you if there is a teaching, if there is a suggestion that there's someone that can do something about this, then there's some acknowledgement that there's a real story happening. Acknowledgement from the teacher? Huh? 
acknowledgement from this. Yeah. Well, of course, because here there isn't anyone. There's no one. There's no one in this room. There's no one to tell what we're talking about, and there's no way to say it. And that's what's longed for. So, so we're kind of stuck in that sense, except it's already the case, so it doesn't matter. So if there is a teaching, there's some sense of... Well, there has to be. It's a story. It's a story that there's an intelligence that can move from one position to another, from, from restricted separation to wholeness. It, does, it never happens. That means that the teacher or the teacher has like some sense of I experience. I, I can't speak for them, but it doesn't make any sense otherwise. It seems like your you, Tony Parson, and what separates what the message with like Rupert Spira and Eckhart Tolle is they're making concessions to this illusory self. Yeah. But there, but with you and Tony, there's no concession. Well, there is no illusory self. Right. Yeah. But they're making concessions to it, and that's why their audiences are bigger. Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes more sense as an individual to go to someone like yeah. that than to come here. Yeah. You get more. Yeah. You'll feel better afterwards. <laughs> There's no group, obviously, from this to this. No, absolutely. <laughs> but, but it feels like glimpses can be induced for some of them. Huh. You know what I mean? Like, well, I see, I don't agree. I think this meeting and anything else is an excuse. And I don't think that coming to this meeting has anything special about it. It's another word I would talk about, I, so I talk about longing, I would talk about openness. For me, openness is what does it. It's an openness to something beyond the individual. And there's no way to affect the openness, it's either there or it's not. And if there's an openness, it can be a leaf falling or a car honking or anything else, or nothing at all, waking up in the morning, there's no one there. You know, like, people don't get runners high when they're not running. Well, this isn't about another experience. It's about the end of the experience. Me, what would describe that? Oh, talk about I'm like, oh, yeah. That like real yeah. Oh no, no. It's, it was just a good feeling. So you're saying that the, the distinction between contraction sense of self and there not being contraction sense of self yeah. is literally just what's happening. If yeah. Absolutely. There's not actually a difference between this. No. It's different what's happening. That's right. Well, yeah. It, appear, how, how it appears different. different. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So that's why you say there actually isn't a separation. Absolutely. Everything is already the absolute appearing. An, an individual or a table, it's just the absolute individualing or tabling. Nothing actually happens. So like in the like in the military, for instance, when they're trying to break down uh, new recruits. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between that and this? This isn't. This doesn't have any intention. It could have the same effect, but it doesn't have that intention. It's not really trying to do anything. If there's an openness, it seems like that might be what happens, and the, the breaking down isn't necessary. There, this isn't about a path of breaking down the me until there's no me. There is no me. There is no separation. There's no path to no separation. But there's the illusion that's being identified with. Yeah, there is. Well, nope. I, it's not identified with. There isn't anyone to disidentify with the illusion. What identifies? It isn't an identification. <coughs> it's an experience of separation. The I am and the illusion and the dream and the story are all the same energy. There isn't anyone that wakes up. It's just re recognized, revealed that no one was ever asleep. There's just... But it's not that now I'm awake. No, well there isn't anyone to be awake. Yeah. yeah. So the idea that what's happening should be different, could be better, or you know, might change next year or whatever, that's all just complete. Well, it's just what's happening. It seems like what's so stressful about being separate is that you have to decide what to do, what's right, what's wrong. Like that is exhausting. That yeah. Is exhausting for me. 
Mm. Yeah. Well, it's exhausting being an individual. So this has nothing for like humanity. No. Well, there isn't a humanity. <laughs> <clears throat> it's already perfect. In all of it. The whole of it is perfect. And just to be clear, it's a perfection, but not because of anything. So, I mean, if you're in the midst of suffering, you can't hear this message, I would imagine. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't agree at all. It has nothing to do with what's happening. So you could be um, tortured, but it's different when there's someone being tortured than when there's no one being tortured. Absolutely. Yeah. There are, there are no prerequisites to the end of something that's already not happening. It can be open as being invasive. No. Mm-hmm. Or just merely being invasive. No, no. It just either is or isn't. Well, like, why are and you won't know anything about it until it's over, and then it kind of becomes clear. Mm-hmm. There's something about something becoming more clear during and after those meetings. These meetings. Oh, yeah, totally. Yep, yep. So that, in a way, there's more attraction to it. I don't know, non meaningless. Yeah. Like, even when it's finished, like, uh, we're trying to go home, and then there's just like this sense of big expansion. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe that's happening apparently. Oh, there's only what apparently happens, nothing really happens. So, this like elation, expansion. Yeah, it's just something else that's happening. happening. And the individual will think it's special or meaningful. Is there any element of some sort of inclusiveness in no. the meeting itself? No. So oh, if there's an openness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But it could be a pile of dog shit if there's an openness. Because it's saying the same thing that this is. What? This is it. This is wholeness. This is complete. It's saying exactly the same thing that I'm saying. Oh. There isn't anything that's not screaming exactly what I'm saying. In the Bible, I think it says, pick up a rock and I'm underneath it, split open a log and that I'm inside, something like that. It's, what's that? St. Thomas. St. Thomas. I thought something, something like that. Everything is obviously Everything's it. saying that. Everything, when there isn't anyone, everything confirms that. Everything is saying the same thing. This is whole, complete, there's no one. What is that? Um, constant. Constant, well, constant's a funny word. A phrase, I think it's from the Bhagavad Gita, everything, everything that's here is everywhere, what's not here now is nowhere to be found. Is that the same thing? Well, there isn't anything that's not here now. Right, so yeah. whatever is here now is everywhere. That's right. Whatever this is everywhere. Now is nowhere to be this found. is everything. That's right. Yeah. So when you say it's complete or perfection, that's because there's no alternative? That's right. Absolutely. There's no separation. There's nothing else. And that is the perfection. That is the heaven on earth. There's nothing else. There's nothing else in this. There's there's nothing other than what appears. And this isn't what's being perceived. That's not what I mean by this. It's nothing appearing as a room. So what you're pointing to is beyond perception. No, it includes perception. It includes everything. So nothing is appearing as a room. But it's not the appearance of the room that's this. It's nothing rooming. That's what I mean by this. When I'm thinking, well, um, one of my thoughts was, I wonder when Jim's coming back. Yeah. Uh, 
Do I want more torture? Mm. Do I want more company? This is like company of madness. Yeah. <laughs> and sanity. Yeah. And but that projection into the it like when it's just what happened. It makes no difference. There's no separation. There's nothing to find. There's nothing lost. You've always been touched by this message. That's fun. Yeah. So, sorry. When you feel separate. No, it's not a feeling. When there's separation. Yeah. It's impossible to see that this is complete perfection. Oh, totally. Because. I, I don't, I've never seen that this is complete perfection. Right. Yeah. But is the reason for that because there's this notion that there's something else out there? Well, that's an effect of separation. No, the, it's because everything is objectified. Everything's separate. So there's this and there's something else. Right. It seems like what you're doing is similar to like a Zen koan. Yeah, I'm just a Zen koan. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they had intention. There was intention to a Zen koan. Well, it seems like there's an intention. Yeah, there isn't. But there isn't anywhere. That's just a dream that there's intention, which comes out of need, the need for this to become something other than what it is already. And this is, like, I, I mean, you might not have heard it, but I said this is heaven. If this is heaven already, not any sort of fancy heaven, obviously, although it's a really cool place. Um, <clears throat> um, what's the, what would the purpose of intention be? If it's free already, What's the need of intention? Um, it would be an outgrowth of compassion, maybe? But if it's free already, what would the purpose of compassion be? Because I don't see it. So oh, see it. No. well, you never will. That's how it hides. Right. Right. That's how it hides. I know, but you're helping me. I am certainly not helping you. I understand, and I'm not being, I'm not being um, lackadaisical about it, but... I understand there's a sense of being helped, but you aren't being helped. It has nothing to do with intention. It has nothing to do with you becoming something. If there is, let's call it help, it's an undermining of the sense of separation, and no one can do that. It has nothing, in a sense, you could say it has nothing to do with what's happening here. This, this happening is an excuse. You mentioned last night um, everything is love, everything is happening in love. Oh, so isn't that great? <laughs> um, and I feel like when you were talking earlier about like this glass wall, and yeah. I feel like the individual me is like, ooh, I love a loving wall. <laughs> yeah, <Like> I know. <laughs> I love a, I love That's not the love I'm talking about. Everything is love and love. And I'm wondering, like, how do I get out of all these connotations? Oh, you don't. It doesn't make any difference. The individual thinks it all makes a difference. Yeah, I just feel like that works. It doesn't make a difference. Everything is the absolute or nothing being whatever is appearing. It's not about what's happening. It's that, it, that it's not separate. I feel like it doesn't matter what happens. There isn't actually anything happening. Yeah. As everything is already the, that or the absolute, Everything is already nothing. Everything, this is all nothing. There is nothing actually happening. It's just nothing appearing to happen, seeming to happen. So it has no value. I'll never know this love. No. No, it's unknowable. Everything we're talking about is unknowable, really. It's a dangerous word. <laughs> dangerous? Yeah, I unknowable? Know. People say things like God is love, love is oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just so That's loaded. true though. Yeah. I feel like I, I need to But that's yeah. still that's still in the story. The love of God is still in the story. Yeah. How about coffee and tea and cookies? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.